Welcome to Second Chance Overcomers Ministry. Minister Curtis Jones here once again, coming to you with our Bible teaching on today. We want to come to you today with a text, People Should See a Difference in Us. People should see a difference in us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for another opportunity to come together with your people, your beloved Father, and just minister your word. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, which is the one who teaches me and helps me. Father God, give me understanding and knowledge, Father, to be able to teach your word. And God, we pray, God, for those that are listening, that they will receive your word with open hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, God, that your word will be a blessing to them. We give you all the glory and honor and praise, Father God, for everyone that, that's watching on YouTube and Facebook. In Jesus' name, amen. We will be coming from the book of Romans chapter 8, and we're going to start reading from verse 1. And it starts as, There is therefore no now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, now let's look at verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the spirit. Let's look at verse seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse eight. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay, that was verse 10. Verse 10 here. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, let's look over at verse 12. Move on down to verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Okay. Uh, verse 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God They are the sons of God Let's look at verse 15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear But ye have received the spirit of adoption Whereby we cry, Abba, Father Verse 17 If children then heirs Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. All right. Now, let's flip over to chapter 6. Still in the book of Romans. Chapter 6. Let's take a look at verses 6. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay, now let's look at verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Okay, now, our text, people should see a difference in us. We just gave you uh, uh, several scriptures about how we are to be according to the word of God. Now, I want to go back to verse 1, chapter 8. When it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That is the difference maker. When we walk after the spirit, when we do the things that the spirit of God teaches us to do, that the word of God tells us and instructs us to do, that makes the difference between those who are not living by God's word, those are not walking after the spirit, those that are walking after the flesh under the law, you know, and they're doing just the opposite of what the word of God say do. 
People should see a difference in us. We that are confessing that we are saved. Okay, we're no longer sinners. Okay, we are a new creature, new creation in Christ. Now, um, verse 5, chapter 8. Or Romans chapter 8 verse 5 Say for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh That's true You know usually when a person Is not saved On a normal base Basically You're going to do what you want to do You're not going to be God conscious Your mind not going to be on the word or the things of God Your mind going to be on Pretty much what you want it to be on Okay and that's just the way it is uh, when you are uh, pretty much in charge of your own life or, or the God is not in charge of your life or you're not submitted to, to Jesus or the Holy Spirit or you're not trying to live by the word of God. Pretty much you're going to call your own shots. Verse five, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But watch the, watch the difference. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. See, when we get saved, we have to read God's word. And we have to purposely study and learn what it is that we are supposed to do as Christians. You know, it's not enough to walk around and say you're a Christian, you save and try to get other people to believe that you save. And even the things that you wear, you know, putting on this kind of uh, clothes and whatever, all of those things don't make you a Christian. What makes up the difference is when we walk according to God's word. When we apply the word, word of God to our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, and then people will begin to see and notice the difference. They won't hear you saying what other people are saying. They won't pretty much see you acting and behaving and doing the things that they see other people are doing. You know, light and darkness is just the opposite. There's no similarity in the two. Salt and pepper, hot and cold, good and evil, you know, large and small, tall, short. There's a difference, you know. And when we say that we are children of God, we're saved. We've been born again. Our sins have been forgiven. We've been washed in the blood of Jesus and so forth and so on. That's a whole lot of confessions versus someone who are not confessing that they're saved. They've been born again. They're not confessing they've been washing the blood of the lamb. They're not confessing that oh, I'm a member of this church and you know, and I'm in love with Jesus. It, there's a big difference. I remember before I got saved, you, you didn't hear me walking around telling no one that I was saved. You know, you wouldn't have never more likely to see me with a Bible, walking around with a Bible. And I definitely wasn't really too interested in like trying to join a church and become a regular person who attended. It was a difference. It was a big difference. My mind was not on the things of God. My mind was on what my mind was on. When you are a sinner or when you are not saved, however you want to label it, you're going to do what naturally natural people do, you know, when you're not saved. But once you get saved, once you surrender, once God gets you to a place of conviction and he deals with you personally to that point where you surrender and you say, God, I'm tired of this life of sin. I'm not happy. Nothing is going right for me. I've tried this and I've tried that. I don't have the love in my heart that I need. And it's just so much God that's going on and Jesus I need you I've been hearing about you I've read about you from time to time and, and Lord I, I believe in you at that point you, you're ready to surrender and you finally surrender God has gotten your attention and you go through the repentance prayer you ask the Lord to forgive you and surrender your life to him and purposely Purposely in your heart, purposing in your heart to make a change, to allow God to make a change in you. You want to give him your all. You want to find a ministry where you can 
get more knowledge of God and get around other people that are saved and you want to start doing the opposite of what you had been doing before you got saved, let's say you was a person that loved going to the clubs. See, when you get saved, you, you, you don't want to do that no more. Your mind, now you want to go to church. You want to do what you probably wasn't doing before. You really didn't have an interest too much in going to church and attending church on a regular basis. When you get saved now, I got to find me a place where I can go and I'll start attending church and be under the word, learn the word of God and be around other people speaking the language of Christ so I can learn from them and grow uh, in this new walk with Jesus. God changes our, our perspective in life. We begin to see, look at things differently. You know, the scripture said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You know, the, the people that we used to associate with for years, friends and what have you, uh, you know, you, you know, you can no longer be a part of that group, even that society. You have to now be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so now I got to start thinking about being around people that are thinking like I'm thinking. These people got their mind on Jesus. You know, they got their sights on heaven. They they, they want to do right. They're trying to live right. So now I, I have to, you know, I have to get with these kinds of people because that's where God is taking me. And then once you once you get into this life, you, you stick, stick with it, stay with it. And as the weeks and days and months goes by and you get over into years and years and years, people will see how different. All the people that knew you before, those that let's say, you know, you parted with, and they'd be like, wow, we haven't seen you. Where you been? You know, we've been looking for you. Now that's your time to give your testimony. Well, I'm through with that life. I'm done with that. I'm no more part partying. I've given my life to Jesus. You know, I'm saved now. I found me a good ministry and, you know, I'm about the things of God. Those that you used to drink with, where you been? We haven't seen in a long time, man. And wow, you know, wow, we've been wondering what's, what's been going on. You be able to tell them, say, well, you know what? I'm through with that. I'm done with that. I'm, I don't drink anymore. You know, I got my mind set on Jesus and, you know, my heart been touched and, you know, I'm just, I just want to do right from this point on. I've, I no longer, I, I don't have any interest anymore uh, in, in those kinds of things. And they will see a difference once you stand your ground. I don't care how many times they, someone may come back or, you know, the enemy may send someone your way to, to test you, to try you. Come on, come on, man. You know, go, you know, you want to take a drink, you know, come on, give, come on now. But you stand your ground because at that point, you own that rock. You own that solid rock. You're standing with Jesus. You're standing in faith in him. And Jesus told Peter, he said, upon this rock, which is the confession that Peter made when Jesus said, who do men say that I am? You know, and Peter went on and said, well, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus told Peter, said, my father revealed that was not you know, given to you of man, but God revealed that to you. My father revealed that to you. And Peter and Jesus told Peter, said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Our faith, once it's strong enough, it will become unbreakable and unshakable. Once we become fully persuaded about who we are, whose we are, about Jesus, the one who died for us, the one who paid the price and made it all possible for us to be saved. No one will be able to talk you out of your faith. As Romans 1 says, there is therefore no now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, even though people can come back and try to bring up things, that you may have did or may have done before you got saved. Once you surrender and give your life to Jesus, they cannot condemn you with the past, those old things, those old sins. There's no more condemnation. 
You don't have to feel guilty anymore. Why? Because the word of God let us know that once we repent and confess our sins to God, as far as the east is from the west, God will cast it from his remembrance. He will not bring it up ever again. We have been forgiven, washed through the blood of the Lamb. What an awesome blessing of God that he has set up for everyone who wants to be forgiven. So it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do to cause us to not truly believe that we've been saved and God has forgiven us and that we can live a better life and a new life. We don't have to even listen to that. We don't have to be entertained by that. Stand on the rock. Stand on your faith in who Jesus is, just like Peter did. Okay. Now, when, when, when we wasn't saved, we was under the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, this is what God did. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh when he was on the cross he had taken on the sins of the world he died for you and I he took on our sins so we can put on his righteousness now we have been made righteous through Jesus Christ. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And clearly verse 5 says, they, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. And verse 6 said, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spirit, spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, once again, changing our mindsets not dwelling on our past, not, not allowing anyone or even yourself, you know, to punish you or to just keep bringing accusations towards you about the sins you may commit, may have committed before you got saved. The will of God is that once we give our lives to him, once we accept Jesus Christ into our heart as our Lord and Savior, he want us to walk in peace. He want us to learn how to walk in love. It doesn't matter even if someone may have hurt us before we got saved or whatever, said things about us, terrible things about us, we got to forgive them. And it's going to take love to do it. It's going to take the love of God to be able to forgive people. We have to let it go, you know, and, and move on move forward in the things of God. That's how people would begin to notice the difference in you. You could have been the meanest person there ever have been. But once Jesus Christ comes in and once we surrender ourselves to him, the Lord God will set us free because meanness and hatred and all those kinds of things, those are not natural things. Those are spiritual things, strongholds. And the enemy has that influence and that power over people, over the mind of people. He can cause one to do all kinds of things that is not of God. But once we get saved and we receive the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of love, which is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the game changer, if you will. He is the difference maker. For the Bible let us know that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will just continue to just fill us with the love of God. He will teach us and help us to be able to love like we have never loved before. And as we get more into worshiping and praising God and praying to God and, and fellowshipping with other saints of God and being into the services where, you know, we just experiencing the presence of God like never before. That's when you will begin to experience joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. Joy that you will I'll never forget. You will come to a place where you will just love praising God, testifying, 
standing up and begin to just share with people the things that God is doing and you look back and see where he had brought you from. Oh yeah, you're going to see a difference in your own life. Not only will others be able to see a difference in you, you will see a difference in you. God is just that good. He changes us so good that we see a difference. That's awesome. And, it, you know, too many times when a person is really not sincere in their hearts about this walk with Jesus, they start pretending. They get into this mindset and game of trying to persuade other people that they are one way when truthfully they are another. And guess what? Those people already know. You cannot fool someone who have been knowing you for most of your life. You can't fool them. You can try all you want. This thing with God, it has to be done by him. He is the only one who can convince men that he has changed us. We can try whatever we want to try. But Jesus said, ye shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You'll never be free until we walk in truth. When we are led by the spirit, the spirit of truth. When we allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of our lives. He will teach us how to walk right. He will teach us how to talk right. He will teach us how to do right. He will teach us how to love right. Pray right. Everything. Anything that has anything to do with righteousness, the Holy Spirit will teach us all those things. And there's a big difference between going the right way and going the wrong way. If you've ever seen a car traveling down a highway facing the traffic, going, to, going face to face with the traffic, it looks so funny. I remember one time uh, I made a wrong turn on a street that was one way and I did not know it. I was new in the town and had just moved there. And so uh, I made that turn and sure enough, I was going facing the, the traffic and the traffic was coming my way. I had to immediately pull over. Everyone that saw me coming, they knew immediately this man is going the wrong way. When we get saved, that shouldn't be a problem. People shouldn't be wondering which way are you going? Once we, once we get saved, they will clearly know it. Because first of all, they're not going to see you like that car coming facing them. They're going to say, I haven't seen you. And where have you been? That's the difference. And once you tell them where you've been and why they haven't seen you in so long, that's when they're going to know. You Now you're going a different way. You're no longer with us. You, you haven't been coming with us, going with us, hanging with us. We haven't seen you, you know, and we've been partying without you. We've been drinking without you, you know. So they're going to know that this person have to be going in a different direction because that he usually be with us. And he stopped coming. We haven't heard from him, haven't seen him. And now I'm running across you now. So they shouldn't have a problem uh, seeing a difference in you. Your, your face the way you look and everything should be different, you know, because when you're in the world and you, you drink and, and stuff like that, you get high, whatever, you know, the next day, you're not going to look all that great from the night before. But let's say that you've gone weeks and a couple of months and you haven't drink, you haven't smoked or done any of those things. And they look at you and they, they look at your eyes and they look at your face and you don't seem to have that dull look, that old ordinary plain look that you used to have. But you look, you look like you have peace. They can see a difference in your countenance. Wouldn't be hard for them to, to notice there's something different about this person now. And they told me they have gotten saved and you know, they shared their testimony with me. It's not going to be hard for them to believe you. Why? Because the light is light. And if a person is in darkness and you're in the light, 
Oh, they're not going to struggle seeing the light in you. Once again, because God has put the light inside. Once he put his spirit in us, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children, the sons of God. Okay. And the text, once again, is people should see a difference in us. You know, we know that we have responsibilities as Christians, you know, to watch what we say. You know, watch our attitudes and watch the way we treat people and where we go. And even when we go certain places, call you know, I'm not, I wouldn't sit here and say, you, you know, never go around people that are not Christian and all those kinds of things. No, you don't do that because when you get home or if all your lights are off, you're going to cut on the lights so you can see. So the people that are in darkness need the light. They need to see uh, uh, we that are walking in Christ. They need to see us. You know, so we have to just continue to be who we are and allow God to con continue to do what he's doing in our lives so we can continue to make an impact on the world and that the world will see the difference. We pray that God would bring them out, that they too one day would surrender to Jesus and turn away from their life of sin. We don't want to get into an area of judging them. We pray for them. We pray for them. We show kindness toward them. That's what we do. So, thank God for Romans chapter 8 and chapter 6, which tells us exactly what we need to do in order to for people to see a difference in us. I encourage you to read chapter eight, the whole chapter of Romans and chapter six. Some very good information in here. Help you to begin to see your true identity as, as a believer. Now, I'm closing. We always close with a prayer. Now for that person that doesn't know Jesus, you've heard this message. God is dealing with your heart at this point. <clears throat> Maybe you're ready to surrender to Jesus today. I would like to give you this opportunity to do so. We extend this invitation to you, to you. And if you're willing to pray this prayer with me, we will be more than happy to lead you into a prayer of repentance. Come on, bow your heads. Say, Lord, forgive me for every wrong I've done. I repent of my sins, Jesus, and I ask you to forgive me right now. I believe that you are the Christ and you died on the cross for my sins and God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus, and save me. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, that I will be saved. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and for saving me. If you said this prayer, <clears throat> I welcome you into the family and kingdom of God. And I ask that you will continue to just study and read the Bible, pray, find you a ministry that you can join and begin to just fellowship and grow more into the knowledge of God and who he is. This has been Minister Curtis L. Jones on behalf of Second Chance Overcomers Ministry. May God continue to bless you and heaven smile upon you. Always remember, God is a God of a second chance. God bless you and we love you.